Democrats got crushed last night in more than just one election, because I'm sure you've heard the news. Youngkin wins Virginia. And this is big because we've been following Loudoun County and the story about these schools for some time. But it's not just Virginia. In New Jersey, the race is too close to call. How this is possible, I, I can only speculate. Culture war issues, perhaps. But this should have been a sweep for the Democrat, for Murphy, in New Jersey. Instead, it's neck and neck, and many outlets are refusing to call it. it it's going back and forth. I ultimately think that Murphy is going to win, but, you know, we'll see in the long run. In several local races in Pennsylvania, in New York, Republicans are winning. And this should terrify Democrats. At the very least, that's what Vice is saying. Democrats should be terrified after last night's election results. Pennsylvania, Long Island, Virginia, and almost an upset in New Jersey. It's showing that culture war issues matter, that people are sick and tired of this cult dictating what's going on. And what we see in the Democratic Party is psychosis. They say that, oh, there's a civil war between the moderates and the progressives and the Democrats. No, I think Ben Shapiro made this point. You've got Manchin and you've got Cinema. Two Democrats saying, hey, $3.5 trillion might be too much. So you actually have the progressives, Joe Biden, who is appointing people based on social justice merits, which is to say not merit at all, just criteria based on identity. But then you have the fringe of the cult that push even further and even harder, who are saying that we need more of, of this you know, what's going on in Loudoun County schools, that white people are evil, that they're, they're giving kids books about adult activities like that's gone too far for the average person. The New York Times has a chart showing the swing from the Democratic vote to the Republican vote. It is massive. The changes in Virginia from the last election one year ago to today, it's a it, it, I'll tell you what it is. It's a bunch of red arrows going to the right. It's absolutely insane. But I think I, I'm, I'm just I'm optimistic now. I'm glad to see that people are finally waking up to the things that we've been talking about, the problems that we've been pointing out, and they're realizing it's having a real impact. But ultimately, as it pertains to Virginia and Youngkin's victory, I think Steve Bannon was right. I love saying that, by the way, because when I had him on Timcast IRL, he said the, that moms are going to freak out when they see what schools are doing to their kids. He came back on the show and says, I didn't realize how right I was. And now we see the election results, because what is it? Suburban white women flipped from Joe Biden to the Republican. It's not the presidential race. I get it. And what people are saying is it shows that it's not about the Republican Party. It's about Donald Trump. And now many people are saying, I think this goes to show DeSantis needs to be the nominee in 2024. I don't know about all that. I kind of agree because we can see that suburban moms are saying like, hey, we'll vote Republican, just not for that guy. Well, there you go. Democrats tried ignoring what was happening in Loudoun because they knew it was bad. They refused to address critical race praxis, wokeness, and because of it, people are saying no across the board. There's one story about, I think it's, I think it's over in New Jersey. It's the, the state Senate president, I believe, is losing to a trucker who only spent 200 bucks to campaign. Why? Because people say enough of the Democratic Party. You know what? I feel, I feel that way. Now, McAuliffe has conceded to Youngkin. This is it. This is big, big news. Virginia could be shifting red once again. But let's go through all of the data we currently have. And I want to talk to you about the Democrats' dirty tricks. Tiki Gate, the story of the, the, the leftist establishment players coming out to Youngkin's event with button-up shirts, khakis, and tiki torches. That's right. Trying to smear the Republican. There's a lot of dirty tricks. One of them is particularly funny. The Democrats sent out mailers of Donald Trump endorsing Youngkin because they thought it would be bad. I'm sure it just helped him. The Democrats deserve this loss. 
This says a lot about what's coming in 2022. So let's read the news and see what's going on. Before we do, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member to get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast, as well as an ad-free experience. And as a member, you'll be supporting our fierce and independent journalists who are producing news all day, every day. So we really do appreciate your support. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Here's the important big news first from the Daily Mail deflated Terry McAuliffe concedes defeat to Republican Glenn Youngkin in Virginia governor race that leaves Biden and the Democratic Party in peril. They say Youngkin pulled off a stunning upset to beat Democrat Terry McAuliffe with a 2.1 lead for the Republican with 99 percent of the vote counted. Youngkin, 54, is the state's first red governor since 2009. McAuliffe conceded the race Wednesday morning. While last night we came up short, I am proud that we spent this campaign fighting for the values we so deeply believe in. Another stunner is pending in New Jersey, where GOP candidate Jack Citarelli has a narrow lead over Governor Phil Murphy. Votes are widely viewed as a referendum on Joe Biden's presidency, and defeat will jangle Democrat nerves. Biden won by 10 points in Virginia and 16 points in New Jersey in the presidential election just a year ago. Biden looked shattered. As he arrived at Air Force Base, Andrews Air Force Base after the COP26 climate summit in Scotland. Well, for our first analysis, I will throw it to our good friends, Vice.com. Democrats should be terrified after last night's election results. In signs of a building red wave, Republicans just won in Virginia, Pennsylvania, Long Island, and almost pulled off an upset in New Jersey, which we will, which remains to be seen. Apparently, They double counted some county and corrected the error and it flipped it back for the Republican. But now it's back. This one's a nail biter. Vice says, and we'll just read a little bit because I think this is important. Vice obviously is a lefty outlet and they're saying Democrats, bad news. You want to know why I use Vice for this one? Because if I came out with some conservative outlet that said Democrats are panicking, the left would be like, no, they're not. Well, this is Vice saying they should be panicking. Vice is not right wing. They say Republican Glenn Youngkin won Virginia's hotly contested gubernatorial election, the first time the GOP has won a governorship since 2009. They say a Republican swept Pennsylvania's statewide judicial elections, including a victory for Supreme, a Supreme Court seat in the key swing state. It's not just the statewide offices that, it, that should have Democrats nervous. They were also defeated in a number of local races on Long Island. The overall results show that Republicans are pissed off turning out in huge numbers and on the march heading into the 2022 midterms as they seek to take back the House, Senate, and a bevy of governorships and other offices around the country. Virginia's election was the most closely watched of the night, and Youngkin's win came after he ran hard on critical race theory and schools issues while separating himself from former President Donald Trump, who remains unpopular with swing voters in the Commonwealth. Democrats immediately began infighting with progressives and centrists pointing fingers at one another over whose fault the election results were. Some in both wings of the party sought to tie Democrats' bad night with their ongoing struggles to pass pass major legislation through Congress. National frustrations with the impact of the COVID-19 Delta surge, supply chain problems, and rising prices likely played a role in these races too. Now, Democrats should be worried about this as for what it means going into 2022. Now, we know that because you have Joe Biden, typically in a first term, a president uh, in, in, in the off cycle election, the midterms, you'll get the other party taking over. That, that tends to happen. And 538, many others have said this is what you can expect. But we also know that aside from that, Joe Biden's approval ratings are in the gutter. Among independents, civics has him at 25 percent approval. So it's not about Republicans being pissed off. If Democrats can't figure out that moderates and Republicans think y'all are crazy, they're not going to win. And you know what? Fine. I guess the Republicans are cheering for it. Happy that moderate and independent voters are willing to side with them, because at the very least, I tell you this. When I watch Youngkin speak and he's like, we shouldn't have kids being taught that they're different based on race. I'm like, I agree. I mean, to a certain extent, right? I mean, I'm oversimplifying. He didn't say exactly that. His point was that we shouldn't treat people differently on the the basis of their race. And I'm like, yes. And then McAuliffe just comes out and he's like, it's not really happening. It's a lie. 
When the media, there was an article that was run in, in Washington Post that said parents don't have a right to choose what their kids learn. I was like, y'all just lost. You are going to lose this election if you think parents don't want a say in what their kids are being taught. Because I'll tell you this, if that's your attitude, all right, then what? Bring on creationism? Bring on, bring on religion? What happens if you get a religious teacher? In a public school, and they're like, I'm going to teach kids whatever they want. No, 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 no. Parents have a say. That's why there are parent teacher meetings, conferences. That's why people vote for school board, because yes, to come out and be like, either it doesn't exist, we're going to ignore it, especially after that horrifying story of the cover up that happened in, in Loudoun County, or they're just going to say, you have no right to determine what your kids learn. That is absolutely insane. That's asking to lose. Now, I didn't know which way it was going to go, but it's the way it went. Here's the official uh, uh, New York Times post on the election at, at, with, with uh, what do we got here? 90, more than 95% reported, 50.9% for Yunkin, 484 for McAuliffe. That's it. It's about 80,000 or so votes. It's not going to happen for McAuliffe. But take a look at this shift in margin. This is big news, and Republicans are going to be high-fiving each other over this one because it means 2022 likely will be the reddest of red waves. Take a look at this. We can see nothing but red arrows pointing to the right. 13 points more Republican, 15 points more Republican, more Republican. Every single, look at this one, 18 points more Republican. So what, what are we going to get? A red wave. We're going to get a big, fat red wave. Now check this out. New Jersey election results right now. The latest data from the New York Times has Phil Murphy up just about 15,000 votes. It is 49.94% to 49.32%. Jack Citarelli should not have been competitive here. Phil Murphy won. I think he, he won by like double digits last time. New Jersey is deep blue. And I'll tell you what else surprises me. I moved. I lived in New Jersey. We lived in South Jersey. It's where our old studio was. And I said, we got we, we to gotta leave. And he still did this well. Now, if I had stayed, it would have been a handful more votes. But maybe if everyone else did, too, a change could have happened. So maybe there is a good argument about not leaving where you are voting and fighting for what you uh, fighting for what you believe in may be the right move. Maybe if people like me actually stayed in Jersey, Citarelli would have had a clean sweep. 15,000 people. I wonder how many people left over the failing leadership. The way I saw it was with 2020. It was just that that was the referendum, right? Are people going to stand up for themselves, say no to this? And they didn't. They said, no, 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 no. We go blue, baby. We go blue all the way. And I'm like, then if you want it, it's all yours. I'm not going to be here. Now we can see just how close it really is. Only 89% reporting. Things can still change. I'm not sure they will. But it seems like things are going to be going towards a recount. We got this. From the New York Post, possible recount looms in New Jersey governor race as Murphy, Citarelli remain at neck and neck. They say every pollster was wrong. This is likely to be a recount race either way. The Garden State's former governor, Chris Christie, told Town Hall early Wednesday, there's a very legitimate chance Jack could win this. In New Jersey, there is no automatic recount. However, any candidate can request a recount within 17 days after an election by applying to a judge of the superior court that oversees the district or districts involved in the recount. Quote, this NJ race is really tight. Jack could win. Burlington and smaller uh, and smaller and smaller south and northwest are red counties versus what is left in Essex, Camden, etc. Recount. OK, strange Let's read it. Let's just keep reading. Apparently, gubernatorial candidates are able to request a recount in New Jersey regardless of the margin. We'll see if Cedarelli does this. Murphy may expand his lead a decent amount by the time the remaining votes are counted. I definitely think this is this should be recounted. I think Cedarelli should stay and fight. And it's not about being disrespectful. It's not about thinking you're deserving. It's not about ego. It's about, look, it's really close. Let's be meticulous. We don't want either side to be upset about this. They will be no matter what, I suppose. But we want people to at least be like, hey, we had a chance. We made sure of it. All right, fine. Because if you don't, everyone's going to claim something or the other. People are already starting to call malfeasance. So I think it's very important that we, we treat this stuff very seriously. Let's talk about dirty tricks. Let's talk about the dirty tricks and how they backfired. Some of them very, very funny. 
I also want to make sure I, I mention too, there's bad news coming for Democrats. Pelosi, I guess, retiring. Many Democrats may be retiring. Yeah, stick around for this one. Check this out. From the New York Post, the media needs to ignore Lincoln liars. Well, here's the image. You probably have seen that. You, you may have seen this story. I mean, I was out for the past week, but this is, this is hilarious. You have these five people. Man, this one made me laugh. They're standing next to Youngkin's bus, and they're holding tiki torches, wearing khakis and white shirts. And I guess the idea is they're trying to invoke the night of Charlottesville. Now, it turns out that these guys actually were Democrat activists. And I think it's pretty obvious because it's a particularly diverse group of people pretending to be, you know, alt-right or whatever. But this one I thought was really, really funny because it's painfully obvious that it's just clear that these people are not there supporting him. They wanted to get the media to say bad things about him, I guess. I, I don't see that working, to be completely honest, but okay. And uh, with this ridiculous stunt, what I found to be the most funny about it, I was like, what if Antifa showed up? Look, you've got a Republican event. Why wouldn't there be protesters? These people then show up dressed like this. I'm like, what would happen if Antifa showed up? And they're like, no, 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 we're not really. We don't really believe it. Antifa wouldn't care. They don't listen. They're just going to go nuts, start beating on these people. This was the stupidest thing I have ever seen. Now, I don't know if this swayed any votes, but a lot of people are saying it backfired. You see this, then you get, I think it was, people were saying Lincoln Project took credit for it. Let me, let me, let me, let me read, let me read for, for you. They say, on Friday, five young Democratic operatives toting tiki torches attempted a, a hoax on Glenn Youngkin. They stood there in the pouring rain next to his bus. The anti-Trump Lincoln Project took the blame for the fraud, which has been dubbed Tiki Gate. But it sure looked like a McAuliffe operation. At least two members of the group have been identified as working for Virginia Democrats. See, this is, this is what I'm saying. This is not just Lincoln Project playing dumb games. I mean, they're supposedly Republicans. Not really. McAuliffe spokeswoman Christina Freundlich was quick to retweet a fo photo of the Tiki Five. This is who Glenn Youngkin's supporters are. You see how dirty these, these people are? Her colleague Jen Goodman tweeted, this is disgusting and disqualifying for Youngkin. Oh, it is laughably bad. I am so proud of all of you guys. I am, I am so excited. I am so optimistic. And I am not a fan of Youngkin, necessarily. I just am I'm so impressed that people are seeing through this stuff. They're seeing through the lies. They're seeing through the manipulation. They're saying no to this. And after years of me and many others before me, talking about wokeness and critical race theory, critical race praxis, and these ridiculous things the cult are doing, people are saying no. I wish people got the message sooner. But message received nonetheless. You know, looking at the elections in 2020 with Congress, there were uh, many districts that uh, the whole thing was shifted red, right? Now, the Republicans didn't take back the House. They didn't win back the Senate. They actually lost a bit of the Senate. But there was a fear that Democrats were going to win everything. What ended up happening was shocking. What ended up going on in, in, say, Miami or South Texas was shocking. Seeing uh, districts that were blue turn red, Miami of all places. And now we're hearing from more and more Latinos saying that Joe Biden's turning them Republican. So let me show you something. This is not just the, the this is not the only dirty trick we saw, which is backfiring. We have this tweet from Shoe on Head, which is absolutely hilarious. The first thing I want you to see is for those that are watching, you can see this image. It is a uh, political postcard of some sort. It's very positive. It says Glenn Youngkin, Donald J. Trump endorsed. There is a circle with a red check mark in the middle at the top. And then it says, Glenn, quote, has my complete and total endorsement. Donald J. Trump, official endorsement of Glenn Youngkin. They said, this guy is like Donald Trump. I said, thank you very much. Glenn Youngkin said that. Then it says, President Trump represents so much of why I'm running. Glenn Youngkin, the Chris Stigler show. We'll take back Virginia. Donald J. Trump, quote, Glenn will truly make Virginia great again. At the bottom, it says Virginia is very, very winnable, but everybody has to go out and vote. Donald J. Trump, take back Virginia rally, October 13th, 21. You want to know what's funny about this? In the next image, it says 
Democratic Party of Virginia, paid for by the Democratic Party of Virginia, authorized by Terry McAuliffe. Apparently, McAuliffe just this past week said that Glenn Youngkin is campaigning with Donald Trump. And he wasn't. It wasn't true. They just keep saying it over and over again. Your boogeyman is gone. Trump is not running now. Shuan Head says, Dems are so cripplingly smooth brained and terminally out of touch. They actually thought this was an own. I couldn't believe it. When I saw this card, I was confused as to what their campaign was attempting to do. Did they genuinely believe that sending out pro Yunkin mailers was going to hurt him? Obviously, what they were thinking was, we send this to Democrats or to moderates, I suppose, and then they'll be scared of Trump. So they'll vote Democrat. I am sick and tired of these people. I got a text message. I told you the story before, but for those that missed it, it said, I'm running against, you know, Lauren Boebert. And you got to vote for me because she's a Republican and Republicans are bad and give me money because Lauren Boebert's bad. And I'm like, so what are you camp? What are you going to do? You seriously sent me a message saying that you deserved my money because you hate someone. That has to be the stupidest thing I have ever heard. I won't come to you. And say, McAuliffe is bad because, you know, you got to vote against McAuliffe. He's, oh, he's you know, far left. I'll come out and say, I don't much know or care about McAuliffe. My concern about the Democratic Party as a whole is wokeness and critical race theory. And I'll give you some specifics on it, as I often do. If you text me and say, I want to do these things, I'll say, OK. If you message me and says and say, I want you to hate somebody, I'll say, please get away from me. This is what they do is this is this, this, this is what they, they spent their money on. Their idea was people will vote against Donald Trump more than they'll vote for our policies. You can't ignore problems. Kyle Kalinske, he's a, he's a good dude. Um, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but he tweeted that Democrats got entrenched in culture. He said he said Republicans only have culture war issues. And instead of focusing on substantive uh, on, on, on issues that can make people's lives substantively better, they got dragged into this. And that's not true. It's not true. It is part partially true that they're involved in culture war within a certain uh, to a certain extent. But there actually are substantive make life better issues as it pertains to the culture war. When children are coming back to their moms and asking if they're evil, which is a woman testified to this. She said her kid came to her and said, is she evil for being white? And the mom was like, what are you talking about? Why are schools telling their kids these insane things? It has nothing to do with history. The Democrats just say, oh, we're just trying to teach the history of racism in this country and Republicans want to hide it. That's not true at all. Now, I think people want to understand the history of this country. But these kids are being in, 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 sent this garbage. And parents had enough. And the Democrats tried to ignore it. And instead of addressing these issues, insulted them. It's not, it's not just culture war stuff. This is the future of our children, which matters most to people. Plus, take a look at Joe Biden. You mean with among independent voters, Biden's approval rating is 25%. And then you sent this. Donald Trump endorses the other guy. How many people do you think voted for Joe Biden who are moderate are like, I regret it. I should not have done that. And they send out this. These people are nuts. But you know what? So be it. They deserve to lose. I got this tweet from Benny Johnson. He says, holy ish, guys. Calls with member of Congress and Hill context this AM about Democrat mood and strategy. Three takeaways. Get ready for an avalanche of Democrat retirements, starting with Pelosi. Biden's agenda is dead. No way forward, kaput. Members are calling McCarthy Mr. Speaker now. No. (laughs) That's not so much a good thing either, but it's really crazy how far uh, uh, things are moving already. Man, 
I got a whole bunch of tweets that I pulled up. I don't even know what order they're in, but we've got this one. This is Mark Bednar. He's just showing the red shift among Virginia. Look at that. That is a red wave. That is, my friends, a red wave. We got this from Julio Rosas. A tweet from Jorge Bania. He says, this clip from Virginia will become the subject of nightmares. This is a Hispanic man. In Spanish, he says, I believe that Biden turned me into a Republican. He says, Biden is destroying the economy. Inflation is through the roof. Everything is terrible. And that's uh, media, uh, media busters, MRC Latinos. Julio Rosas says, Dems using Latinx more often will be a surefire way to bring them back into the fold. You know what? If Democrats want to embrace wokeness and this absolute insanity, by all means, let them do it. I have no allegiance to either party, Democrat or Republican. I'm not a fan of either. Republicans sit on their hands. I think Mike Cernovich tweeted something like this. He said that, uh, I think it was Mike, he said that Democrats go crazy, right? You know, they, they pull really hard and things got really bad. So people vote Republican, but under Republicans, things basically just stay the same. And then eventually people get tired of the bad stagnation and then go Democrat and then Democrats make it worse. And that seems to be the order of operations as we have it right now. The Republicans aren't going to improve anything. People are voting Republican because the Democrats are bad and the economy is in the gutter and they'll vote Republican and things will just kind of stagnate. So I don't know what else people should expect. I don't know exactly uh, uh, what what can be done except primaries. You got to vote in the primaries. You have to make sure that these do nothing Republicans like McCarthy, McConnell or Lindsey Graham are not going to be the Republicans who win. We have, you know, when I was listening to, uh, uh, it was a news clip of, of um, Youngkin, and he's saying schools should not be teaching people to be treated differently on the basis of race. I thought to myself, what a moderate position. I mean, actually, it's progressive. So what do the Democrats have to offer? Now rewind the clock back to 2016. Think about Donald Trump. And it's something that we've long talked about. Donald Trump was a moderate. Yeah, he's a bombastic guy, but his policies were fairly moderate. He was pro-America. And so I think a lot of regular people just said, I'll take it. I'll take what he's got to offer, even if he's a potty mouth. The Democrats then said, how do we offer anything? We can't go to the right of a moderate. So they went left. People like Bernie Sanders, who in 2015 said, open borders is a Koch brothers proposal. Then coming out, in the, in the primary in 2019, being like, you know, uh, we, we should have a moratorium on deportations, a pathway. Like, wow. You flipped, went further and further left, and Bernie was already a left guy. It's funny, though. The World Socialist website called him a nationalist capitalist because he's not left enough. Here we go. Josh Kroshar. Now, uh, this is just a tweet announcing the... Uh, the um, Concession, so you get it. We've got uh, results uh, shifting. As you may have just noticed, it shifted in, in New Jersey. We've got the results here on New York Times. Got a tweet here from Michael Tracy. This one's good. He says, the GOP candidate for governor in New Jersey made minimal news throughout the campaign and received minimal support from national GOP, which was fixated on Virginia, yet is still within a whisker of unseating an incumbent who outspent him and brought in a parade of national Dems to campaign. People are done with the Democrats, and everyone seems to be getting ready to move forward. And here we go. Let's talk about 2024, 2022 and 2024. From Team DeSantis, a recession is when your neighbor loses his job. A depression is when you lose yours. A recovery is when Dr. Fauci loses his. This guy, Ron DeSantis, he knows something. He's paying attention to the issues that people care about. In Florida, uh, you, you, you may have seen the, uh, uh, the post I made earlier today. I just recovered from COVID. I had uh, the kitchen sink treatment, one of which was monoclonal antibodies. Ron DeSantis has been providing monoclonal antibodies to regular people. The Biden administration tried to stop it. DeSantis apparently found a way to get it to people, and it's helping. 
It really is. It is an emergency use authorization treatment, and it is helping people who are getting who, who have gotten sick. I, I was I'm impressed by that. In 2022, I think we are going to see beyond a blue wave. If Democrat retirements are really coming, if Pelosi bows out, what do they got left? There's no there's no leadership. Name a Democrat who can run for president. Yeah, nobody could. They could barely do it in 2019. They're like, Joe Biden, I guess. We may be looking at the actual uh, Republican, you know, um, super, uh, you know, full control of government. I remember back in 2018, I was like, I think we might even see a Republican supermajority. Why did I think that? And I was wrong, by the way. I thought it because these issues around the culture war that were affecting everybody certainly had to play a role in like pissing people off. But apparently it didn't. I think the reality is maybe it had to get to their kids. You know, because all the people say to me, Tim, I can't stand up for my politics. I've got kids to feed. And then all of a sudden, one day they found that these woke in, the, the cultists were indoctrinating their kids. And then they said, if I don't stand up, my kids are going to be subjected to this for another several years. And so they said, OK, no. 2024, I think what we saw with the right now, white women is hashtag white women trending on Twitter. I think what we're learning is that suburban housewives, namely white women, flipped from Democrat to Republican. I think Donald Trump was a salty candidate. He did really, really well. He got 10 million plus more votes than he did in the, in the prior election, but people really did not like him. So what happens if you get a Ron DeSantis? Here's a guy who's a lot younger, who understands culture war issues, who is doing right by the people of Florida. Everyone's really excited for it. What happens if he runs? Suburban women aren't going to hate this guy. Not like Trump. The media will smear him. You bet. It won't stick. This, DeSantis is, is way savvier. I think, at least for right now, all signs point to a major red wave in 2022 beyond what we were previously expecting. And I think, oh man, Republicans going to win in 2024. So it's, 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 an, it's an eternity till then, though. So I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. tonight over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all then.